Well, we're looking again today at Revelation chapter 20. This is an awesome chapter of the book of Revelation. And we're going to finish this chapter by looking at what is the second death. Let me read for you this scene that we've been examining, the great white throne judgment that will happen at the end of the age at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 11 through 15 of Revelation chapter 20, we read these words. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the whole earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to their works." Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Well, when it says this is the second death, what does that mean? Well, the second death is the casting into the lake of fire. Of fire. In other words, it is eternal rejection from the presence of God. We saw back in Revelation chapter 2, verse 11, about overcomers and a reference to this second death. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. And earlier in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So if you have part of that first resurrection, which we believe speaks of the new birth experience, a spiritual resurrection, if you have part of that resurrection, of that eternal life, then you will never be hurt of by the second death. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So some people want to make fun of this and say, oh, you're a fire and brimstone preacher. Well, yeah, I guess so, because it's in the book of Revelation and it's in the Bible. Revelation chapter 14, 9 through 11 talks about this harvest of judgment. But look back at chapter 19 also of the book of Revelation, verse 20. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, those who worshipped his image, these two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And so there you see the devil and those that aligned with him are cast into this lake of fire that's burning with brimstone. Jesus spoke of eternal fire, Matthew chapter 25, 41 and 46. And so if you believe the words of the Bible, you must believe that there will be not only an afterlife, but a real heaven and a real hell. And the second death is basically eternal separation from God. So if you've been born again and your names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to be thrown into that lake of fire. You will not experience the second death. If you are living an overcoming life, Revelation 2.11, you will not be hurt of the second death. That fiery lake of burning sulfur, this is the second death according to the Bible. Well, let me give you a beautiful phrase now. And it can work for you or it can work against you. Have you ever heard about someone whose record, whose court record had been expunged? Maybe they were arrested for something at an early age and some kind of deal was made that if they did so much time and, and, and so much probation and didn't get any more trouble, then their record could be expunged. Well, that comes from an ancient practice of removing ink from parchment.
You see, in ancient times, parchment was very valuable. And whenever possible, it would be reused rather than simply discarded. If something had been written upon it in some form of ink, it could be esponged. And here was the process. The Greek word uh, is ex alepho, and they would take burnt ivory, cork, gum water, and they would mix it together, and then they would take a sponge, and they would put it on the sponge, and they'd use that sponge to press down on the ink on the parchment and just kind of blot it out. And literally, that, uh, that uh, arrangement of materials, burnt ivory, cork, gum water, all mixed together at the right temperature, could literally cause something to happen molecularly in the ink and literally lift it off of the parchment. It would release itself from the fiber and you could literally take all the ink off of the parchment and there would be no trace that it had ever been there. Well, why do I say it's a glorious thing? Well, in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, we read, I, even I, am he that blots out thy transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember thy sins. Notice what he says, that he will blot out their transgressions. In other words, he will remove them, and there will come a point in time where there's no trace of them. Now, I know in this lifetime we're living out sometimes the consequences of our sins, but realize this, that God can blot out your sins so that he can relate to you and have a relationship with you, and someday we can be in glory forever without ever having to carry the mark and the scars forever of our sins. Isaiah 44, 22, I blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Acts 3, 19, repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Uh, talking about when the Lord comes again and the, the refreshing presence of the Lord. And so sins can be blotted out. But here's something else that we need to be aware of. We have been talking about the Lamb's Book of Life. And if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will not have to fear the second death. You will not be hurt by the second death. You'll never be cast into that lake of fire and brimstone that burns forever. You don't have to worry about that if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But listen to these words from Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and his angels. So there you have it. I will not blot out his name. Why would God say such a thing? I will not blot out his name. Remember when Moses was appealing to God in intercession for the sinful people of Israel after they made the golden calf? He comes before God and he's asking God to forgive the people. And he says this, he says, yet now in verse 32 of Exodus 32, yet now if you will forgive their sin, there's a pause, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. And that refers to Old Testament thoughts of a book of citizenship, of those who were the citizens of God's family, of God's kingdom. So Moses said, if you're not going to forgive them, then blot me out. Wow, what, what a statement to make. In the, in the Psalms, in verse uh, 69, in verse 28 of Psalm 69, Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So there is indeed a blotting out. So it is possible for some to be blotted out. Well, let me say this. Either your sins will be blotted out by the blood of Jesus Christ, or your name will be blotted out, and it will not appear in that book of life. So either your sins have to be blotted out, or you will be blotted out.
Now, I know that we look at that and we say, well, if, if I have my faith in Jesus Christ, th that's why the Bible talks not only about having faith in Jesus Christ, but being a disciple, following through on your faith in Jesus Christ and living as the Bible proclaims you to be an overcomer. The goal of the book of Revelation is to assist people in overcoming. Psalm chapter 9, verse 13 says, Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Well, now Psalm 109 is a very unique psalm. But here's the thought. If your name is blotted out, you're lost forever. But if your sins are blotted out, then you are saved forever. So again, I ask you the all-important question. Do you know beyond a shadow of any doubt that when Jesus Christ comes again and you stand before that great white throne judgment, that every man, woman, child who's ever lived will stand before the white throne and the books will be opened and you will not be saved by the book of the law. It'll only be recorded how you broke the law. And the book of works will be opened and you cannot be saved by good works, but it'll also be recorded all the evil works and thoughts and deeds that we did. The only thing that saves is if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And so when that page is opened and we look up your name, so to speak, to follow through on the picture, will your name be there? Or will it have been blotted out? You can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you will go to heaven forever. That your name doesn't need to be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. Instead, you can have your sins blotted out. Why don't you thank Him for that right now? And just say, Jesus, I thank you for blotting out my sins by your blood. You're going to help me overcome in this lifetime. And in the next time, I can, in the next lifetime, rather, I can enjoy eternity with you forever because my sins were blotted out not my name blotted out well how do you get your sins blotted out if you confess your sins in true repentance he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness my friend it is so important that as a believer you also learn to live as an overcomer. And that's what the book of Revelation is really all about. The triumph of the Lamb, even over against the forces of evil, against the dragon and the beast and all the symbolic uh, pictures of evil and Satan. They're all against the church, but the Lamb triumphs and His blood is greater and your sins can be blotted out. Your name can be written in. And when that great day comes that you stand before that white throne and the books are open yours will be a day of rejoicing and reward for we all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and so for those that are lost whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life they will be cast into that lake of fire that burns forever and ever and theirs will, there will be theirs will be a judgment uh, a, a judgment unto a lostness for all eternity but what about for the righteous it will be a judgment unto rewards everything you've ever done for the Lord every thought you've ever thought every pray you've ever prayed uh, every burden you've ever carried Carried, all that you truly did as unto Jesus will be rewarded on that day and for all eternity. And so, my friend, live today in light of this great white throne judgment. Thank Him every day for His salvation that is only through His blood. Not through the law, not through works, but only through His blood. And thank Him for the assurance that as you confess Him before men, He will confess you before the Father. It's as if, now I'm picturing this, but it's as if the, the, the book is opened up and He will say to the Father, See, there's their name, they're mine. There's His name, there's her name, they're mine. I confess them as mine before you you. So continue to confess Jesus. Continue to allow the Spirit of God to work within you and the Word of God to rise up within you so that you can live a truly overcoming life. For if you overcome, your name will never be blotted out, but rather your sins will be blotted out.
Well, we're going to continue our journey through the book of Revelation. We only have uh, two chapters to go in this great book. But the next lesson, we're going to see a new heaven and a new earth because the former things pass away. And I trust that you have already become a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, with old things passing away and all things becoming new.